Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah. Ve salatu ve selamu ala seyyidina Resulillah. Ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve men vela amma ba'd. My dear brothers and sisters, by the grace and the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, today I'd like to share with you the story of Prophet Musa was a righteous man known as Al-Khidr. And this story is mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf the chapter of Al-Kahf and it is the third story of four important stories mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf, the chapter of the cave. And as I mentioned previously, the stories of the Quran focus on the important lessons that we can learn from. The stories of Quran are not mentioned for historical purposes. Some details pertaining to the story of Musa and Al-Khidr are mentioned authentically in some of the books of Hadith, such as Bukhari and Muslim. So accordingly, whenever we study any story mentioned in the Qur'an, we should primarily rely on what we have been told in the Qur'an and what has been mentioned in authentic hadith. And the reason I mention this is because there are many additional historical details that people associate with the stories of the Qur'an that are not authentic nor do they have reliable sources. So from what has been mentioned the hadith authentically, we know that Prophet Musa, may the peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, was once asked as to who was the most knowledgeable person on earth. And Musa, being a prophet, who was given knowledge that was not given to anyone else, he responded that he was the most knowledgeable. Then Musa received by revelation the news that there was someone on earth that he has knowledge that Musa did not have. So Prophet Musa then decided to make a journey and to meet this person and learn from him. And he decided to live in the company of his disciple, who the Quran does not tell us his name, but the scholars of Tafsir tell us his name was Yusha ibn Nur. So the story begins with Musa <coughs> telling his disciple, La abrahu hatta ablugha majma' al bahraini aw amdiya hukuba. That he told him, I shall keep traveling until I reach to majma' al bahrain. Majma' al bahrain is the point where the two seas meet the conjunction of the two seas. And some scholars say the two seas that are mentioned here are the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. So somewhere around the, the Sinai Desert in, in, in around Palestine and, and then so on and so forth. So he told him that I shall keep traveling until I reach to Majma al Bahrain, the conjunction of the two seas. And this is where he was, he was told that this knowledgeable, righteous person will be available. So, in the company of his disciple, he left. And he arrived at his destination. 
and he found the man. And who was this man? This man is mentioned the Quran as Abdan min ibadina, that a servant from our servants, meaning that he was a devout, righteous person. Now many scholars say that he was not a prophet, even though he was given knowledge that no one else had, even though he had knowledge that Prophet Musa did not have, still he was not a prophet according to many, uh, to many scholars. So he was, this, he's described in the Qur'an as a servant from our servants. He's described as someone whom Allah bestowed mercy, rahmah upon him, and someone whom Allah bestowed upon him unique and extraordinary knowledge. So a man who was a devout servant, blessed with knowledge and blessed with Allah's grace and Allah's mercy. That's the extent we know about him from the Quranic verse, but from the hadith of the Prophet and from the commentators of the Quran, we know that he was Al-Khidr. So he met him and Khadr and Musa humbly said to him, shall I follow you? Shall I accompany you? And what is the purpose? So that I learn from you. And to alimani mimma ulimta rushda. So that you teach me from the guidance that you have been taught. Now Al-Khadr was willing to accept Musa as his student and to allow him to follow him and be in his company. But he said to him, Qala innaka lan sabra. He said, you will not be able to be patient with me. Why? He said, because you have no knowledge or I will be doing certain things that you will not be tolerating or accepting because you don't have the knowledge that I have. In other ways, that you don't have the background or the full knowledge and you will see me doing certain things that you will object to and you might find uh, outrageous. So he said to him, if you want to follow me, then the condition is, do not ask me anything unless I tell you what it is. So Musa agreed. So the condition to be in his company is not to question anything that he does. So Musa accepted that condition and he said, by the will of Allah, I shall be patient. So they left. They left together. And the first thing that happened was they boarded a ship. And this ship was owned by a group of poor fishers. People who do fishing, they were poor. That was their only source of livelihood. And they were kind enough that they allowed Prophet Musa and Khidr to ride the ship free of charge. But right away, Al-Khadr did something that was very, uh, very disturbing to Musa alayhi salam. Right away, he made a hole in the ship. And Musa said to him, أَخَرَقَتَهَا لِتُغْرِقَ أَهْلَهَا لَقَدْ جِئْتَ شَيْئًا نُكْرًا لَقَدْ جِئْتَ شَيْئًا إِمْرًا he said to him that you, you put a hole in the ship and you want people to drown? Then here Khadr said to him, didn't I tell you, you will not be able to be patient with me? So what Musa saw was something that anyone would consider to be unacceptable because these fishermen were nice, they allowed them to board the ship, 
And the first thing he does is he makes a hole in the ship. And obviously anybody would consider this unacceptable. You can't do this to people who have been nice to you, to, to you. But only, not only that, this is their only source of, of, the, of livelihood. So Khadr did that for a reason, which he knows, but Musa doesn't know what that reason is, and that's why he was, did not accept this, and he very strongly objected to that. So then Khadr reminded him, didn't I tell you, you cannot accompany me, because there are many things that you fully do not grasp, or you don't have the full knowledge. Musa apologized. He asked for apology, and then they continued their trip again. Now, right away, shortly after that, Khadr finds a young boy, and he kills him. And this was even worse than the first one. So imagine if Musa was outraged by what he did the first time when he made a hole in that ship. Now imagine how much angry he would be now when he sees him killing an innocent boy. So he objected again and he said, how would you kill an innocent person? For no justifiable reason, he has not killed anyone. He has not committed anything that deserves him to be killed. Then again, Al-Khadr reminded him and said to him, didn't that I tell you, you cannot be patient with me. You will not tolerate what you see. Now again here, Musa apologized, but his apology this time was different. He said to him, if I ask you again, in if I ask you again, then you don't have, I don't have, you don't have to allow me or you, or you can stop me from accompanying you. So basically, this is my last chance. If after this one, I object to what you do, then you don't have to allow me to accompany you. So they continue their journey and they came across a town. Of course, they have been traveling, they are tired, they are hungry. And it was an acceptable norm everywhere that when people come to a town, people would receive them, would provide them food and water and would welcome them. But unfortunately, the people of this particular town were very unfriendly. They refused to give them food. They refused to, 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 to host them. So it was a very difficult situation for them. So they decided to leave, and as they were leaving, they came across a wall that was about to fall. So Al-Khadr was out being asked, he went ahead and he fixed the wall and put it where it was or where it should be. Now Musa said to him, why didn't you ask them to pay you? Because they were in need of food, so if they would have paid him, then possibly they could go and buy food. So he said, why don't you ask for uh, compensation for putting that wall uh, back to normal and fixing it? So here Al-Khadr then said, that is the end. This is the point where we are to be separated. Because if you remember, Musa said, if I object again, if I ask you again, then this will be my last chance. So he had his last chance. And now came the time for both to depart. 
But then Khadr before departing he said to him, let me explain to you what I did and why I did them. So the first one, why did he make a hole in the ship? So Musa al-Khadr told Musa that there was a tyrant, a tyrant king who was confis confiscating any good ship, any, any, any ship that's in good shape, he would conf confiscate it and take it. So he said that these were poor fisheries who had no other ship other than this one. So in order to protect their ship for them, I put that hole because the king will come and see that ship and would find a hole in it and he would leave it. So he did it for a good purpose. Even though Musa was angry, and the reason Musa was angry was because he did not have the full picture. He did not have the knowledge of what was waiting for them. There was a tyrant who would have taken that ship from them. So he, to, in order to save that ship for them, he made that hole in that ship. So basically, a lesser harm was done to avoid a bigger harm. If the ship did not have that hole, the king would have taken that ship from them and they would have been left with no means or with no ship that they can go and fish with. So that was the first explanation. The second explanation he said to them that that boy, his parents were righteous. They were believers, they were good people. And this child was destined to be a source of much grief and much pain and much agony for them. And Allah wanted to provide them with something, with someone who was more righteous, more caring, someone who would be the comfort of their eyes. Allah wanted to provide them someone who was more righteous. So, yes, they might feel the pain for the short term, but that pain would be compensated by the comfort they will find and the replacement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide them. And not only that, the, what Khadr did would prevent them from going through that painful experience of having a child who would cause them so much grief and agony. And then for the third one, where he fixed the wall that was about to fall, he said that under that wall was a treasure buried or hidden. And that treasure belonged to two orphans. Their parents were righteous parents. They were righteous parents. And he said, I fixed the wall so that the treasure will, 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 will be kept hidden and nobody will come and steal it. And when they grow, they will be able to take it and to benefit from that. So here what we notice, my dear brothers and sisters, what appeared to be wrong, what appeared to be uh, unjust, what appeared to be outrageous, when Khadr provided the background information, which he was given by the knowledge that Allah bestowed upon him, he was seeing the full picture, but Musa was only seeing part of the picture. Now, when he gave him the full picture, now it became clear everything that Al-Khadr did was for the greater good of the people who were involved. So, my dear brothers and sisters, 
this conversation or this journey, even though it was a short journey between Khadr and Musa alayhim salam, it has a lot of lessons that teach us something very important, very fundamental about the nature of this life and the fact that we might know certain things, but there are also many other things that we don't know. And sometimes our judgments could be short-sighted because of, because of lack of having the full picture or the full information. So inshallah, in the next Friday's uh, reminder, I'd like to share with you some reflections and some lessons that we can learn from this important story of Prophet Musa and this righteous man, Al-Khadr. May Allah be pleased with all of them. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.